Hey everyone, Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio. Welcome back to the fourth in the emoter series. This is going to be the last emoter video, which is going to be triggering emotes manually. Uh, so the manual pool. And this is where our scene left off last time. So let's get rid of this and we'll leave these sad and surprise in here. Let's make sure these are doing what they should be doing. Yeah, okay, those will be good. We're going to show how to trigger an emote manually. And what that means is we have to have some mechanism external to the Salsa Lip Sync Suite that triggers an emote. That could be a piece of code. It could be one of these timeline uh, type applications. There's a myriad of ways of doing it. We are going to do it in code and we will have two examples, one to do a round trip and one to do a one way. So on a one way, we have to turn it on and then we have to turn it off. All right, so we remember from our previous video, there are four pools and this particular pool right here, the sleepy is also part of the repeater pool. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of that. And none of these are in any pool other than the manual pool. Remember all emotes are in the manual pool by default. We need a script and I have a shell of a script here called manual emote. And so the first thing we're going to do is a round trip. What we'll want is a reference to emoter because that's the way we actually trigger the emote. So let's put public emoter reference in here. And I think that's all we need for this. So let's go ahead and do our method, which is going to be to trigger the emote. We need it to be public so we can call it from an external script. The way we'll do this is wire up a button in the GUI so that we can trigger one of these emotes. We're not going to return anything. We'll call it trigger emote. How's that? And we'll need to pass it a string. So once we get this emote name in, we will assume a valid emote name. And the emote name is going to be what we have configured as our emote name right here sleepy. So in previous videos, you heard me say these name fields do nothing. They don't do anything internally here, mainly for organization. But in this one instance, we will reference these emotes by their name. You can also reference them by the index number if you know what that is, but it's much easier here if we just use the name. So let's go back here. So what we'll do is call on our motor instance and we will fire manual emote and what we see this needs initially is either an index or a string name and so we're going to pass it our emote name as our string and in this first example we are going to do a round trip emote and this is really all we need to pass is just that it's a round trip and that is it because everything that we have configured in the emote is what's going to be used. So all the timings and the easings and controller and all that business. So this should be good. Trigger emote, everything's public, good. All right, let's go ahead and save this. We'll go back in here, quickly configure a button and we will just call this button. This doesn't mean anything, it's just a label. All right, but we'll go into the button and we will add an on click event here and this script needs to be on something. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it on a motor guy. So I will drop a motor guy in here. And so now we should have reference to our script, a motor manual emote. That's the one we were working on. And we are going to trigger emote. It needs a string. So this will be sad. Sleepy, sad, and surprise, right? So what we'll get is when we trigger this, it will turn on sad and sad will turn on and then it will turn off by itself because it is a round trip. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, we click this and oops, what did I forget? I forgot to link up my emoter. Okay, so in here, I need to link up my emoter because we didn't do that in the script. There's nothing in here to automatically link it up. All right, now let's try that again. Click the button, there's sad. And then he goes back. And that's based on what we have for our timing. He animated on pretty quick. Let's let's give him a second to animate on and a second to animate off. So I can just change this right here. I'm gonna trigger him so it takes a lot longer. He holds and then he comes back. Okay, so that's a round trip emote. 
Let's go ahead and do something where we click once and it animates on, and then we either click another button or we click the same button and it toggles it back off. So if we do the same button, then we've got to maintain the state of it because we have to know if it's on or off. If we do another button, then it will just always try to turn it off. Let's just do one button because it's the most complicated portion of it here. So if we do public void, we're not returning anything, and then we'll just call this one way emote. Or let's call it toggle because that's what we're going to do. Toggle. Emote. All right. We'll take the same string. All right. And so it's it's basically going to be the same thing. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And then we're going to add, we're going to modify this to be one way. And then we also need to tell it which direction we're going. So one way means we're either going on or off. This next parameter here, the duration means nothing to a one way. Instead of creating a bunch of different overrides, we just left it in here because you could put anything in here. You could put, you know, a thousand, you could put zero. It doesn't matter because it's one way. There is no hold duration on a one way. So just put whatever you want in there. I'll just use zero. And then we need to have a Boolean declaring the state. So we'll just call this emote state. So I'm going to come up here and and we're going to start out with it false. So it's going to be off. And then what we do down here is toggle that. So emote state. All right. So what will happen? So we start out, we assume it's false. So our emote state is false. When we start up, the emote won't be on. It'll look like this. When we toggle the emote, we pass the name. It will toggle the state. So it will then be true. And then we will call the manual emote, sending it one way. Uh, that one way will be on in this instance because it will be true. Then the next time we hit it, it'll come back through. This will be true. Then we'll toggle it to false. And so it will turn it off. So let's save this. We have to change which method we're calling here. So let's go ahead and do toggle emote. All right, so now we toggle him on and he'll stay there. And then we can click it again, toggle it off, toggle on, toggle off. So these emotes can interrupt. Even if in the animating on direction or the animating off direction, doesn't matter if you re-register it with an opposite, it will go ahead and blend that opposite in. Now, if we pass in the wrong name, so if we look at our button and we have, like, pass sads instead of sad, then this won't work. And you'll see down here, emote sads not found. So that's an indicator for you that you've got the wrong one. Anyway, that is it for a one way. So we did a round trip and we did a one way and we decided that we wanted it to stay on longer or a specified time. We can pass that time right here so we can put the duration. So if we wanted that duration to be, let's say five seconds, then we can add that in here. And if we go back and let's rewire this up. Did I save that? No. And let's rewire that button back up to the round trip and we'll go to trigger emote. And right now the emote itself is set to one second. So normally we see it on after one second, it will go off. So now if I trigger this, it'll be on and then wait for five seconds and then go off. On. And now we're waiting for five seconds because we've specified that it's a longer time value. Okay, so I think that's all there is to say about uh, manual modes, at least for this general overview. And that will wrap up our tutorials for Emoter as well. I hope you've enjoyed these and we will see you in the next video.